Welcome back to Let's Play Nobody Saves the World. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're here in Marrow Village, deep in the earth. Last time I, uh, heard all about the tempering. Only to be turned away at the door because I haven't paid the entry fee. But it does sound cool, so maybe I'll do that later. I want to start this episode before I actually start playing golf by uh, giving a shout out to Yornik, who says, I can't be the only one to notice that your horse form can move backwards while looking ahead. Moonwalking horse! Moonwalking horse! Moon bloody walking horse! <laughs> And I'd also to give a shout out to uh, Justin Jones, who uh, brings up the Lovecraftian by saying, The Calamity Lands. Based on your description, it makes me think of something right out of Lovecraft. Or if we want to go for a more esoteric reference, the Far Plain slash realm from Dungeons and Dragons lore. Another possibility? Are there chaos worshippers in that world? Specifically followers of Zinch? <laughs> Sorry about that, I needed to make an adjustment. Uh, but yes, without getting into the whole spiel about the four gods of chaos, uh, Zinch is the god of magic and change, and he uh, tends to reward his uh, followers for their uh, obedience by giving them mutations. Like you grow a fucking extra arm with which to stab people, or you grow a second head so you can know twice as many things changes for good or for ill, he represents the part of chaos that is constant change. He's also such an infamously skilled ma uh, mastermind that they say his plans are so complex that even when he completely loses, he still wins. But, uh, yes. We are standing here looking at an egg that needs to go in a hole. So I'm going to try the, I don't know, this? Shit! Didn't even move. Hmm, that's a problem. I don't have anything that pulls the enemy out of the corner. Even if I did, I don't seem to have it equipped. Fuck it, I'll put this on, then. Oh, actually, uh... I don't know what the, uh, the horse's special quests are. No. That's funny, I don't seem to have any quests for the horse mixed with other uh, classes. In that case, I'll just put... Uh... Slime Slide on the horse, it's funnier that way. Ah, uh, no, it's already kind of what it does with the, uh, the gallop. Uh, let's do arrow flurry because it's sharp instead of blunt. Piss! I lost. Try again. Yes. Shit. didn't move at all when I did it as the, uh, the knight and hit him with my sword. Uh, it made almost no distance, did it? Alright, the mermaid tail does seem to be better at it, but I just need to learn how to aim it. Fuck. What the? It bounced off the hole! No, this 
this is silly. It's still a quest, so there is a way to do that. It's just very silly. I feel less good. Well, I might as well go do something stupid. Oh, you know who could use Slime Trail, though, is the mermaid. Swing your tail at baddies, push yourself towards them. Honestly, if she lives in water, she probably wouldn't even mind being covered in mucus all the time. from uh, I don't leave footprints in the snow. I can't tell if the bigger number is from the kick or from hitting them into the wall. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Let's do something dumb. Oh! Oh! Okay, from the looks of things, I can swim in lava as the mermaid, but it starts making a fire meter fill up above my head, so I got the fuck out immediately. Knowledge is power. Well, that was sillier than I intended. Flop around on land with tail swipe 15 times. No. I am not going to redeem that until I use it on enemies. Oh, butts. I hadn't found one in, uh... What the fuck? There. I hadn't found one over here yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm not ready for the dead dragon yet. Where the hell? There we go. Here's some goons. One, two, three. There we are. Really doling out the harshness of bravado there. Tail swipe one, flop around on land with tail swipe 15 times. Yes. Tail swipe two, hit baddies with tail swipe. Okay, fair enough. Alright. Oh yes, the cave. Why am I still the mermaid? Oh no, the cave was full of goons. You know what? I need this anyway. Baddies damage by consume, kill it baddies with sharp damage, and poison baddies faster. on the last day of uh, August. Feels good to have a whole month done. In terms of uh, content, I mean. <laughs> Back where I started the session. 
right, I did forget about you. Ah, I forgot about the other crabs. This way this time. Wait, that's not a... It's a stack of tires that are on fire here. How did they contain the fire so neatly in the middle? Surely it would have spread out and burned the rubber. Oh boy. Rust Rock Baron. I was not where I thought I was. That was embarrassing. But yeah, it looks like a desert canyon, cactuses, uh, sand, dirt. And, uh, burning tire piles. Fuck! Why do I keep thinking I'm over by the middle? There's nothing there except this little purple lizard guy. Sup? It's a whole bunch of nobody wanted posters. Oh, my mistake! This isn't the forest a ranger is supposed to be looking through. Oh, hello, fellow guardsmen. I've been looking for that guy all day. Oh, uh, which one did I put on here? Oh, I see. No, I, that's, that's not what I thought it was. Yes, okay, so we'll put horse power back. Oh, well, if I'm gonna do that, then, uh... waste a bunch of mana so I can do this. Wait a minute. That's not me. Oh shit! I remember that guy. That guy in the middle was one of the bosses from uh, Guacamele. I don't remember his name, but he was a, a gunslinger. Like a, a stereotype of a western cowboy, but with fire and a face for a head. That was a weird game, too. I mean, it started with some people breaking out of the Mexican afterlife in order to kidnap El Presidente's daughter, and it got weirder from there. Oh, Met Guardsman looking sharp. Hold up. Let me take a look at you. Hmm, you don't look like a nobody. My nose never misses its mark. I know exactly who you are. Oh, shit! I just spontaneously turned back into nobody. You violated the law! Your stolen goods are forfeit. You must now serve out your sentence. This is an Elder Scrolls reference. The only thing missing was him saying, Halt, criminal scum. I'd better find and tell Randy. Fuck. Holding cell. Oh, I turned back into guard. There's a pile of newspapers over here. I mean, yes, it would be one thing if there was a pile of newspapers like this one next to a toilet. That makes sense, in a horrible way. Why is this one way over here by itself? Also, why is there a piss bucket and a toilet? Well, never mind, I can just walk out of this guard. No, no, it's summoned a crab. Ha <laughs> ha uh, Well played. Oh, fuck! That is not how the big crab is attacked. He just keeps punching his eye out at me. Like it was, uh... Oh! This is 
isn't what I normally do on my channel. Normally, I give shout outs to the uh, you know the viewers, but uh, shout out to my personal nemesis, Tommy the Xenomorph, and uh, congratulations on being added to Dead by Daylight as the most recent killer. I think it was the most recent one, anyway. <laughs> Yes, they have added the alien to Dead by Daylight. But you can tell that it's Tommy and not just any other alien. Because it's got a... Uh... Well, let me show you. So this is the alien from the original 1979 alien. And uh, as you can see, he's got plenty grade, which is to say human style legs. We go down to a knee that bends uh, forwards, have an ankle and a flat foot, you walk on the soles of your feet. Very straightforward, we've been doing it for eons. Much more straightforward than the fact that they have two thumbs on each hand. And this is Tommy, from Alien Isolation. As you can see, he does not have that style of legs. His legs are digitigrade. They bend forward, then back, and then down. He's, uh... As far as the bones uh, go, he's walking on his toes all the time. As uh, the, the soles of his feet, in terms of uh, similar biology, are the backs of this part of his leg. And this is the alien that appears in Dead by Daylight. Here seen chasing down some hapless fool. And as you can see, he's got the same digitigrade legs as Tommy! Oh yes. I am uh, under the impression that the reason that they put the digitigrade legs on the, uh, the one from Isolation, even though it was off-model, is because, well, the original alien from the original movie was a guy in a rubber suit, and they found that when you could see his legs, that was really obvious. So the movie is framed very heavily, so you very rarely see the alien's legs moving. He's either just standing there ominously, or you only see him from the waist up. And, uh... You know, you can't do that in a video game, because especially in a game where you can't, or you don't script when the alien shows up, you're gonna be seeing that thing from all angles as it's hunting for you. So they gave it cooler looking legs so that it looks, uh, you know, less silly from every angle. Although there was precedent for that, uh... One of the aliens in Alien 3 had, uh, digitigrade legs because it was born from a dog, not a human. But I am babbling about something entirely unrelated, so once again, congratulations to Tommy! Hopefully you can gorge yourself on those hapless victims and leave me alone. <laughs> And now I've got to try not to die to all these crabs. Oh! That was a good use of stomp. Oh, I don't have any mana to use, uh, consume. Shit. The reason I brought that up is because the, uh, the attack these guys do, where they just sort of thrust their eyeball out at me, on a little stalk, reminds me very, very much of uh, the Xenomorph's inner jaw that it uses to punch a hole in your skull. Oh! Fire breathers! Ah! Uh... No! Thanks God, these guys don't chase me around very hard. He's not even going in the right direction right now. No eyes to speak of. Okay. Probably should have seen this whole fight here coming, but whatever. Quest discovered dungeon, the Clank. It's a level 10 Demi dungeon. That seems like a useful place to be. Oh, and the store guy. All swords must be kept in their scabbards. Store policy. Oh, that's not the voice. Whatever. Poison dampener. Poison takes 25% longer to build on you. Status explosion. Inflict a negative status on a buddy to cause a sharp explosion around them. On a, on a baddie. Sorry, not a buddy. 
Passive, very clear. Okay. Oh, and sure-footed. It's a picture of a goat. Knock back, knock back and interrupt immunity while health is at or below 50% of max health. Oh, and he added more stock to his star charges. Dungeon reveal. Reveal a dungeon's location on your map. Finds a nearby unrevealed dungeon and reveals it on your map. Quest. Infinite quest. Break wards. Once purchased, this quest is yours forever. Complete it over and over for endless XP. Infinite quest. Open chests. Once purchased, this quest is yours forever. Complete it over and over for endless XP. I'm going to get that right now because there's technically a limited number of chests in the game. I should probably get break wards too. Since I'm going to be doing that as I fight guys anyway. Huh, didn't bring up the things as I bought those quests. The clank. Open chest zero to five. Break war break baddie wards zero to fifty. I have revealed the clank on the map, I just wanted to make sure of that before I uh, bought the thing. Oh, he only has two. Let's get one and see how it goes. Morningstar Power Plant? Man alive. Don't get yourself killed. Or I suppose in that guy, and uh, with that guy would be, don't get yourself killed, stranger up here. The other side of that office and the guy is missing. Cool! Hello. Rust Rock, Rust Rock Baron. Scrap fast! Scrap fast! It's a uh, humanoid. Purple, completely covered in eyeballs. Leaning on a pickaxe. Kind of waving at us. Hi. Can't stop Scrap Fest, baby! I didn't know that was a person. That's just brown blob on the ground, like a puddle, with a mouth, a hand, and an eyeball, except the eyeball is on the side instead of the front. Oh, there's more fungus here. Whoa, step back, stranger, they'll chomp your limbs right off. There's some crabs in here. Welcome to Rust Rock Baron, we're the self-appointed security team for Scrap Fest, trademark. Every year we gather around the ancient robot and celebrate our own mortality. But a bunch of mysterious monsters appeared after the storm. We left all that gross goo all over the robot, the centerpiece of our festival. The goo is deteriorating the vintage decay. We, the security team, have already captured not one, not two, but three monsters. A uh, boss went escaped. Okay, two monsters. And only 498 to go. You guys must have been mutated the same way the peacocks were, huh? Can't stop Scrap Fest, baby! Man. There's a fucking fairy right there. Bunch of metal bits all over the. Of course, we're closer to the robot. Of course, there's metal bits all over the place. But there was a dungeon back there. I think that'll be a good thing to take on in the uh, last episode of the day. Wait, who's this guy? I don't know who that is. If that's another game by these guys, I don't recognize that guy. Admittedly, I have yet to play uh, Guacamelee 2. Well, in any event, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'll see you on the next episode of Let's Play Nobody Saves the World. When we head into the clank, and, uh, well, see what's there to look around at. Let me guess. We'll fight a bunch of guys, avoid a bunch of traps, and we'll get to the top and fight a bunch of waves of monsters before we get several upgrade tokens. How's that sound? <laughs> These demi-dungeons are uh, not enormously varied, but uh, 
They are a pretty good challenge, so yeah. Should be good. I'll see you then, Burning Dog fans. Later. <laughs>